Are you struggling to find your inner quiet zone? Well, if you are, congratulations, because you're not alone. And in fact, you're actually in really good company. So what inspired this topic? Well, I teach intuitive and psychic development. And the way that the programs are taught is in a meditative format where you are kind of, you have your mind involved in moving the energy around your body and playing with certain techniques and, and then noticing what you notice and sense what you sense, no matter what your intuitive style is, whether it's through a feeling style or an auditory style, or maybe you're more visual, or maybe you are simply not simply, uh, a very strong knower. But often the first thing that people will say is, I can't meditate. There's no way I've never been able to meditate. It's not possible. Uh -uh, I can't do it. So if this sounds like you, then this is who this uh, video is for. So I'm going to take a look. You're going to see me look down once in a while at my notes. So Here's the thing, during these times of enormous rapid change, there just really isn't an option to not meditate. That there is this way that you you really are going to need to find that quiet zone within you, that deep, deep place of peace so that you can become more centered and balanced. And so you can hear that maybe quiet voice of your own spirit, your own soul. Because if you can't meditate, then the only way that most people will find a way to just get some peace from that crazy head of theirs is to participate in numbing activities whether it's, uh, what did I say here? You know, looking at your phone all the time and, uh, watching YouTube videos on repeat over and over and over again, except for my videos that doesn't count because it's educational. <laughs> um, maybe you, Oh, it just started to drop. Uh, maybe you're eating tons of cakes and pies and breads and cookies and all those delicious sweet things because you can really get blissed out on the sugar or maybe, uh, drinking alcohol and drugging to excess. How about gambling to follow those little bright and shiny bells and whistles of the slot machine? or work until the wee hours of the morning, or never get out of bed and just sleep it off. Or the other thing, which maybe sometimes I wish I had this issue, is to exercise 24 seven. Now, have I missed anything? If so, you can just pop it. What is your default mode of operating? You can go ahead and place that in the comments section. Sorry, my phone just beeped, so I had to shut it off. So all that I mentioned works, all of it works to help quiet the mind, give you a friggin' break, um, help you kind of, uh, de-stress, kind of let the air out of the tires kind of thing. And it works really, really well until it just doesn't work anymore. And that's exactly what happened to me about 30 years ago. And for many of you, maybe you haven't heard my story, but I call it my down on my knees moment. I was a nurse married to a police officer. So we're both, and I was an intensive care nurse. So we were both in that kind of service to humanity type work. Uh, where we were really giving a lot. We had two pre-teens, maybe starting into teenage years. And at the same time, we had three family members who were in various stages of the dying process. So that would be enough to push anyone to that edge of that cliff of sanity. And that's exactly what happened to me where I got to a point where working all the time wasn't working eating food that maybe just wasn't the best choice for me, but 
boy, did it taste good going down. Um, unfortunately, I don't, I can't drink because I'm allergic to alcohol. <laughs> but there's many times where I say, damn, I wish I could take a drink right now because it, it seems like it would be a really good choice. Uh, but my choice was, you know, eating and staying super busy. And so that can work for a while until it doesn't work anymore. And that's exactly what happened for me. Um, and when I call it my down on my knees moment is when I got down on my knees, it was like, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know where to turn, you know, and it's like, if, if there is a God out there, why do people have to die? And it was a few days later, I had a spontaneous out of body experience. And that voice came through and said, you don't die. Nobody dies. Your body sheds, but your spirit lives on. And so that's why it's become my life's work. So um, then that glass cracked, and that's what I, you know, I talked about. I cracked. And fortunately, I mean, it started to crack and then it broke wide open when I had the out of body experience. Uh, but within that month period of time, I was able to find somebody who could assist me. Why? Because I kept having, I kept disassociating. I kept having out-of-body experiences and I couldn't get my mind quiet. It was incredibly busy. I couldn't find my inner quiet zone to save my life. So I'm going to talk more about that. And at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about how that looks. How does your energy field look when you struggle to find your inner quiet zone? So recently, so for the past 30 years, I've broken a lot of glass ceilings. I've, I've been pushed to see the world in ways nobody ever told me things exist in the world because I could see in the spiritual world at the same time I could see in the physical world. It was like, I didn't know angels existed. I didn't even know I was a spirit. I didn't know loved ones could talk to you on the other side. I didn't know you could see mystical, magical dragons or giants or little people. You know, I didn't know that any of that really exists until I could start to see it. However, I still, no matter what, always needed that daily dose of an inner quiet zone. So just recently, the glass started to crack again. And I was sitting there, it was actually just about three days ago and I was sitting there and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. And so what had happened was my head started getting busier and busier and noisier and noisier. And my ability to find those quiet places was, um, next to impossible. I found myself watching some type of series at the same time I was playing a little, uh, solitaire game on my phone. So not only was I being distracted by the television, but I was also being distracted by the game. So I was getting a double whammy of distraction that felt so friggin' good. <laughs> Can any of you relate to that? It's like, if I can keep my mind that distracted, then I can't hear everything that I need to be paying attention to. So that glass was breaking for me because my spirit and the blue beings of light wanted me to start talking more galactic wanted me to start talking more star beings, wanted me to start talking more blue light and orbs and light codes. And because we're going through this enormous change in the next few months, six months, the next six years, um, the blue lights are surging of these photonic waves of light. And I had to sit down and I was like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I just don't want to hear it. And I know that all of you are listening to this and it's like, why not? That would be the coolest thing on the face of the planet. But you have to understand, I have devoted my entire life as a registered nurse, focusing on the benefits of working with your own human energy field. And that because 
we struggle. I struggled. You struggle. It's like, let's bring some stability to our physical health, our emotional, our mental health, our spiritual health, remembering that we are a spiritual being having a human experience. So what spirit told me was, you know, Nancy, you're going to build up these distractions. And the reason why you're building up so many distractions is because there's something you really, really need to hear and you're avoiding listening to it. All right. So back to that question. Do you also struggle to find that inner quiet zone? So did you know, based on my experience as a healer, that if you want, if you wait to have a total emotional and mental breakdown, like Humpty Dumpty, it's going to be a lot harder to put all of your pieces together. About 10 years ago, there was a documentary that was going to be shown at a college, um, University of Puget Sound, that's only a few blocks from my house. It was a big advertisement. It was just a huge buzz all over town. And, uh, and the uh, producer, the creator of the documentary was gonna be there for questions afterwards. And so the name of the film is Crazy Wise. And so the question at the end of this documentary was, are you crazy or are you wise? And so sometimes that really busy, noisy head of ours can make us think we are a hopeless cause when you're having anxiety or severe depression or panic attacks, or you're just feeling stuck and miserable in your life. And you can often wonder, am I ever going to feel better again? And why am I talking about this? Because as the frequency is rising, we're supposed to be feeling blissful, right? We're supposed to be feeling intuitive and spiritual and expansive, but that's just not the way it works for anybody. It just, it, I have worked with new beginners who've never meditated before. And I have worked with people who have had a spiritual practice for 30 or 40 years, and they would still seek me out for a session because they felt stuck or they were right in the middle of a breakthrough or a breakdown and they needed some insight. So I promise you there's nothing wrong with you, not in the slightest, but you are getting messages. So this, are you crazy or are you wise was about this. It was this invitation to look at mental health from a different perspective. And if you simply can't find that inner quiet voice, that does interfere with your mental health. If you can't sleep, but maybe one hour a night because the frequency is just so high and you can't get grounded, that can interfere with your mental health. If every time you try to go out of the house, you have a panic attack that can interfere with your mental health. So in this documentary, are you crazy? Crazy wise is the name of it. And you can see it. I think the full documentary on YouTube or on, um, Netflix, probably a lot of platforms. That's the question. Great documentary, by the way. So <clears throat> I stayed afterwards and I, wanted to talk to the producer because they talked about shamanism and working as a healer because I worked as a healer. I wanted to have a little conversation and I told him I've been doing this for a long time. And so he said, I have a question for you. Do you believe that people who have a mental breakdown that they can heal? Do you believe that they can heal? And do you believe that it is a spiritual experience? A, yes, I believe it's a, a spiritual experience. And B, yes, I do believe that any mental imbalances can be brought to center and can be healed. However, I said to him, what I've learned is, is if you, you've heard me, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you've heard me say, 
Spirit always says either move or be moved. Either you move yourself or spirit's going to move you. And what I've noticed, if you might come to the brink of having that glass ceiling shatter where you think I'm losing it. My anxiety and panic is at an all time high. So, but if you do have this enormous mental breakdown, you just completely are not able to manage your life. Then if it gets that far, it's just based on my experience, just going to take you a little while longer. So if you get there before you have that total break, then let's say you can manage it in months or a year. But if you wait till you have a big break, then it might take you a couple, two or three years to resolve it, just depending on how you work with yourself. So, um, all right. What do I want to say about this? Cause I know what I want to say, but it's not coming up. Okay. Here it is. So did you know, based on my experience, you really have to tap in and get your own information. So, but I'm just going to share with you my opinion based on working with thousands of people. Did you know that when you feel anything other than happy and content or feeling just in general, feeling that life is good. If you're feeling anything other than that, then your body is signaling to you, listen up. There's a message underneath here. Now I felt good. I felt content, but I noticed my television screen time and my phone screen time was on the rise. I was getting the double whammy. So that's when my spirit now, granted, I have cultivated a little louder voice. That's when my spirit said, Nancy, you are avoiding me. That's my spirit. You're avoiding me. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> my spirit's like, you're avoiding me. So if you are feeling anything other than that, you're not feeling great, but you're not feeling horrible. You're just feeling okay. If you're feeling off, then your body is signaling you to pay attention because something important is on the horizon. That's right. So if you're feeling anxiety, depression, sadness, panic, discontentment, stuck, agitated, angry, jealous. All of these are signals that your spirit is attempting to gain so that it can get your attention where it said, listen up, this is important. Now I do want you to hear me. I don't think anybody is ever going to totally get rid of anxiety. I don't think you're ever totally going to get rid of anger. And I am definitely anger is an amazing healing energy. You're not going to get rid of jealousy. These are the ways that your spirit communicates to you. But if the noise and the sound of those feelings and sensations are getting louder and louder and louder, it is not a signal for you to run faster and faster and faster. It's a signal to you to get quiet, find your inner, um, what did I say? <laughs> What's the name of my talk? Quiet zone, find your inner quiet zone and listen. All right. What is it that I'm missing? Yeah, I know. I know. I know my job is just sucking the soul light out of me, but man, does it pay good. You know, it's things like that. And it doesn't mean to quit your job, but do other soul giving things, add soul giving things to your life. So these are signals to listen up. And did you know that when you are attempting to locate your inner quiet zone and it inspires you to get more strongly distracted nervous, 
fearful, desperate to reach for that inner quiet zone and it's just not working, it can be easy for you to drop back into that disconnecting from your own spirit. It's like click, hit the mute button to your higher self saying, you're ignoring me, Nancy. <laughs> Fortunately, my spirit knows that I'm not going to ignore it for very long, but you want to hit the mute button of your spirit and just go back to your default of watching TV and playing on your phone at the same time or eating tons of sugar or gambling or having a bottle of wine, you know, whatever it is, or overworking. Um, it is the closer you're about to get to that inner quiet zone, the louder and more distracting it's going to get. But often, what do we do? We just put down our meditation tools and say, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. It just doesn't work for me. It can work for everybody else, but it doesn't work for me. So what's happening? You're getting there. You're almost there. So the louder the noise gets, the closer you are getting. So, all right. So your inner quiet zone I'm using this example as a jawbreaker. And when I was a kid, we had jawbreakers and they were these big balls, you know, you could just <laughs> stick them in your mouth and just, you know, have this big jawbreaker in your, in your gum, in your, in your pocket, in your mouth. And it would have layers of colors. So you'd suck on that thing and it would go to green and you'd take it out and look at it and it's blue now. And you take it out, look at it, it's, it's yellow or red or purple or blue because you're getting to the center of the jawbreaker. Well, getting to your inner quiet zone for some of you who haven't meditated before and you're just learning, it is like getting through those layers of noise. You just can't give up. Now I am going to tell you, I'm going to share with you what that looks like in the human energy field, because I know that's going to help you. So, um, each layer dissolves and shows another color of distraction. And then it repeats the layers until you eventually reach the inner part of that, that jawbreaker, that piece of candy. How about this? Have you ever found yourself drawing those swirls on paper? All right. You're doodling. You just think you're doodling, but you're just drawing those swirls. Most people do it. Now, did you know that those swirls are a spiritual map to finding your way from outside of yourself? outside of yourself to get further in and in and in until you get to the center of the quiet zone. So it's that way of, if you find yourself doodling a lot, you're making those spirals, you're doing it absentmindedly, then that's your spirit saying time to get into your inner quiet zone, time to get and find that peace of mind. So um, in Nepal, I just, I went to Nepal, gosh, let's say it was 10 years ago. And we took a group, I think we took a group of like 14 people with us. And so it was this tour of Nepal and we were all over Kathmandu and we, we had some amazing friends that were showing us around. When we first landed, it was just loud. You know, it's like, okay, where's our room and where's the bathroom and where do we put our luggage and where are we going to have dinner and how far can we go and what, what time are we going to have dinner and what time are we going to meet as a group again? And so it's just like this crowd of like 20,000 people in this auditorium. It's really, really, really loud. Two weeks later, by the time the trip was over, people were quieter. They had found their inner quiet zone. But what my dear friend is, who is a spiritual, I don't know what he likes to be called. He's a person, uh, but he's very spiritually attuned. And he said, Nancy, did you notice 
they're on that swirl. And when they were on the outside of the swirl, they had a lot of questions and they wanted to have a lot of answers. But as they got, as they get closer to the inner swirl, they have no questions because they are at peace in that inner quiet zone. So I, I hadn't noticed that until he had pointed it out. So ask yourself, when was the last time, when was the last time I actually felt my mind calm? When was the last time I actually felt my mind calm? When was the last time I actually experienced a happy moment where I felt content? And keep going further and further back until you find that spot. And then get your mind, your whole energy field to remember that zone. You'll still, so maybe it was when you were 28 and now you're 56. Keep wanting to remind yourself of your current age, but see if you can match that quiet mind to help your mind remember it's done it before, it can do it again. Now I taught, um, I have a nonprofit and uh, to where I teach meditation, it's soulseeds.net if anybody wants to check it out. All right, so um, about six months ago, <clears throat> I was teaching a group of people that work with low income families and uh, so I was doing a four-week class for them, uh, and they would come once a week for four weeks. And each week I would teach a little, then do a 15-minute medita 15 meditation, and then they would ask questions or share afterwards. So everything was done in a one-hour period of time. But the reason why I share this is because men, it surprised me when many of them said, I didn't know if I was going to be able to even sit quietly. I didn't even know if I was going to be able to find a quiet place because I didn't even know a quiet place was possible to exist in my mind. And so they could never remember a time in their life when they had a quiet mind. So the reason why I tell this story is because even if you don't have a memory of a quiet mind, you can still create one. And that's exactly what happened for them. After a 15 minute meditation, they had big shifts. Now, there's hundreds of different types of meditations, uh, but the type of meditation that I taught them is on my website, intuitivemind.org. It's free under um, shopping button free meditations. Um, I've got several free ones there for you. And the blue light one is also uh, an awesome one to do. So ask yourself, when was the last time? Remember the moment. Was it laying in the grass under the stars? Was it swimming in the ocean? Was it <coughs> petting your dog or cat or riding a horse? Was it hiking or a yoga class or an intense exercise class that kicked your butt so hard that you couldn't think at all? It doesn't matter. Try to find that moment and try to match that moment. Recall that moment. Place yourself there in that quiet state. Is the noise busy mindedness distracting or is it pulling you further inwards? Now that's a really good question because remember when I said it can be noisier when you're out here, but as you get closer to in here, it gets quieter. This is your quiet place. All right, let's see. I think I've got the, how do you define meditation? Did you know that a majority of people who hear the word meditation will know deep inside that they are being called to meditate? They'll say, I know I need to meditate, but I can't do it. And did you know that there are hundreds of ways to meditate, to self-reflect, to quiet their, your mind? So if one way doesn't work, then find another way. And for those of you who are very empathic, meaning that you feel a lot, 
then doing some body movement before you try to sit and find that quiet zone, it's going to help you a lot. <clears throat> now, in my nonprofit, and I teach meditation to those who serve low income housing, serve the homeless, you know, uh, the elderly, disabled, they're all in service of that. And often I will have, sometimes I'll have the students say, oh, I've been meditating for 20 years. You know, this is old hat. I've done this, been there, done that, have the t-shirt. And after they do this, what I call an intuitive style meditation that I teach or a more of a mentally active style, um, they will say, well, I've been meditating for 20 years, but I have never, ever had an experience like this. I had another woman who shared with me, I was about ready to teach the meditation. And she said, I've been doing spiritual work for 20 years. I don't know what 20 years is that mark. And she said, I'm here to see if you can teach me something I don't already know. And I was like, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> and afterwards she said, I've been doing spiritual work for 20 years. And this is the first time I think I've really done spiritual work. So again, I'm, I'm reminding you of this because you might not be doing the, you may, may have not found your zone of what's going to work for you. So let me share with you, um, you, you must find a way to get quiet. Maybe you can only get quiet in the bathtub. Maybe you can only get quiet when you're doing yoga. You've heard me say that getting out in nature, uh, getting, if there's, you can't have light, then put one of those masks over your eyes, put earplugs in, whatever you need to do. But energetically, this is what it looks like when it is so noisy that you just don't think you have a quiet space to rest anywhere in your body. So what happens is often your so you have your auric field that goes all the way around you. And so when I am looking at your aura, the inside of your aura is going to look a little bit of white or grayish or swirly black and gray, like fog or a storm brewing, right? That kind of stuff. But on the outside, it's going to be this ring of gold. That's going to look kind of like a donut. You're the hole in the middle and all this light is on the outside. That light is you that you're so distracted by life that you just don't even know how you're feeling on the inside and all of your lights on the outside. And it is an easy fix. It's like, you know, you get your elbows and it's like, I'm moving back in the center of my aura. So that's what you do. You get right back into the center of your aura. You just pretend and imagine that you know what your aura is like, and you're going to move to the center of your body. And if you can't do it right away, give yourself a break. The other thing, it's the same with the head. It's going to be all this kind of stormy, foggy, cloudy energy here. You're outside your head. It's noisy. It's crazy. And you're trying to make it in and you feel pushed out and you try to make it in and you feel pushed out. So when you want to meditate, you want to be near your pineal. So sometimes I'll take my fingers and I'll just put my fingers right here. I'll close my eyes and I, it's like a sign. I'm pointing to my, my light inside, get back inside. You know, like the kids get back in this house, get back in this house. And when you move inside behind your eyes, towards the back, closer to your pineal, that's going to be your quiet zone. That's your quiet zone. So, um, so you're not broken and there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that maybe you've been living outside of yourself for a long time and now it's time to live inside of yourself. And that's what's happening during this great time of expansive, consciousness. We're being asked to show up right authentically in our truth, show up. And I'm telling you, when I look at somebody with an aura like that, and I say, get back inside, it's like that. They just shift right back into the center and they're like, holy smokes, this feels amazing. And I'm like, 
Yeah, that's your spirit. Your spirit does feel amazing. But when your spirit's outside your body, your body can't feel it. Right? All right. I've gone on enough about my little soapbox. <clears throat> but again, getting back to, are you struggling to find your inner quiet zone? You're in good company. A lot of people are struggling, but you just are, are going to have to do it. And I hope that after watching this video, you're going to try again and again and again until you are able to find even just a nanosecond of peace and then build it from there. All right, everyone. I have faith in you. I know you can do it. I've seen the craziest minded people that have, I call them squirrel, you know, where it's just like they're chasing that thought everywhere, be able to find their own quiet zone. So I know that you can do it too. All right. Take care. I'll see you on the next, um, video teaching.